Welcome to Viking Spotlight, a podcast about people, events, and projects in the North Canton City School District. I'm your host, Jeff Wendorf. The City of North Canton will be dedicating a new Dogwood Adaptive Playground this Saturday at 10 a.m. We're happy to have Catherine Farina with us today to talk about this addition and to the community. Uh, Catherine is the Deputy Director of Administration and Development at North, the City of North Canton, and she's been busy with this project for a few years now. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. We're excited to partner with the uh, city on many, many things, but you guys have run with this. And I know a lot of folks are excited about this project. Yes, so we're, they are. we're very anxious to hear you tell us about it. So before we talk about details of the playground, um, can you explain to our listeners what an adaptive or an all-inclusive playground is? Certainly. The objective of an inclusive playground is to provide a thoughtfully designed play space with a variety of safe, age and developmentally appropriate play equipment where children with and without disabilities can interact and play together. The design mixes adaptive play equipment throughout the space so that it's not just relegated to one area of the playground. An inclusive playground shares the concept of inclusion that we see in education today, you know, where we have children with special needs who are mainstreamed into classrooms. This increases awareness of neurodiversity and gives children with disabilities the opportunity to engage and learn alongside their non-disabled peers. Great. That's awesome. Uh, we face a lot of that in schools, and, mm-hmm. and uh, to have a space like that for the community to use is, is great. Where did the idea come up uh, from in the city? Well, it came about about five years ago. I received a call from a North Canton resident who was also a parent of a child with special needs, and she told me the only way that her entire family could actually go visit a park together to accommodate her son who was in a wheelchair um, was to drive either 30, 35 minutes up to an hour away. She wanted to know why North Canton, we're such a great community, great schools, great people. Why didn't we have a playground that was adaptive like this in our own backyard? I I thought we may have more equipment than I was aware of, so I contacted our park superintendent and asked him and found out that out of our eight North Canton City parks we have, we did not have one that had an adaptive surface. They all had wood fiber mulch. So as you know, that's not suitable for a wheelchair. And then sadly, we only had one adaptive swing on one playground. And I just found that to be totally unacceptable in 2017. So I set out to change it for our community. Great. So it's been going on for a few years mm-hmm. and finally uh, through a lot of work and we'll get to the details. But so what'd you do then? I mean, did you look for others? Um, did you try to design instead of a few items at each each park or each playground, you decided on one fully inclusive piece? And how did you go about looking at others and doing your research? Uh, Well, first of all, we identified that the area, the green space that was over in the Dogwood Park um, was just perfect for it. And years ago, that area was filled with water and used, I guess, as an ice skating rink, but that stopped years and years ago. The play equipment there was very minimal. And what we found from other communities is it um, is trend to have one large adaptive playground and the centrally located place. So the planning process then did begin with a lot of research, research on the cost and the availability of adaptive equipment and looking into what funding was available for that and the different types of layout and designs. So we did many site visits throughout the state with myself, our North Canton Parks um, Superintendent, Brian Hill, and our Director of Administration, Patrick DiOrio, came along to a few. We visited um, schools also that had developed inclusive playgrounds, and we got to see the different types of equipment and different types of surfaces. We were able to ask their process. We also then engaged professionals from Akron Children's Hospital Pediatric and Occupational Therapy and Physical Therapy, and we had a focus group meeting when we were selecting the equipment from the specific um, playground equipment provider. And we included North Canton City School Special Education Mm -hmm. staff that was led by Special Education Director John Welsh and got input uh, in that focus group as well. Sure. Great. That's awesome. So it's not just for kids with disabilities. It's um, open for all. Can you talk a little bit about that? And uh, the playground is certainly adaptable for students with disabilities Mm -hmm. or or, uh, limitations, but um, not for all. Correct. There's something for everyone. We say from toddlers to teens and all in between. So there's various levels of play equipment based on their age. And like I said, with the adaptive equipment, it is mixed throughout. So there's really something we tried to have something for everybody. Yeah. And, and maybe one that wouldn't 
somebody wouldn't think of was parents. If mm-hmm. a parent happened to be in a wheelchair to go to a regular playground, it's very difficult to move right. in a mulch and, and mm-hmm. you know, maybe a pea gravel or right. anything Parents, like that. grandparents, so, anyone right. using any kind of mobility sure. device, whether it's a cane or a walker, they weren't able to join in on play before when it was in a, a wood mulch. Right. We, that was one of our objectives through our, our 7th Street projects. In recent years, we've paved the south parking lot and the east parking lot so that you can actually get to the grandstand and the stadium without going through gravel because that's limiting in a walker or a cane and so on so right. yeah great well and, and based on surface mulch is typical um, maybe mm-hmm. sometimes some gravel tell us a little bit about the playground surface well like i mentioned before yeah all of our playgrounds did have mulch and mulch is typical in most and it's very inexpensive but we decided to look at all the available surfaces there's a poured rubber um, there's a poured rubber um, uh, squares that you can put down or then this mulch that we are I'm sorry um, turf this ADA accessible turf surface that we looked at it's just beautiful it looks like mm-hmm. green grass and uh, we decided to go with that and, and to your point you know that helps to um, encourage multi-generational play when when everybody can move along effortlessly on that type of surface right that's very interesting good and some of the equipment is uh, not just for play it's for therapy is can you tell us a little bit about the therapy equipment that's there Absolutely. Um, we Children with disabilities uh, sometimes attend therapy sessions where an occupational or physical therapist will utilize uh, maybe an adaptive therapy swing for sensory input training, and that's to develop their vestibular and proprioceptive e- exercises. But then when that parent goes home, they can't really continue with that sensory training without having that proper equipment. So unless they're going to invest in some similar type of swing in their home that there's they have at the uh, therapy center, um, they will now have those swings on the playground. We have a few that will look like a regular play swing to others but for those that know they'll know that's also a therapy swing sure yeah and uh, we we do the same in schools some of our therapy rooms and even classrooms have a uh, a texture wall where there's Mm -hmm. different kinds of textures grass and and uh, some other things felt and and some other uh, items that are available for kids for a sensory piece too good well, you've been working on the, the project for a few years now, and, um, you know, in current times, construction timelines are a little crazy with uh, um, the availability of some materials and so on. Did you face any particular hurdles in your project? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the project started in 2017 with writing for the grants and the funding from the state of Ohio for it. Then the next step in a public project is to bid out the project and select your architect to design the park and your construction manager to build it. And once we had all that in place, then COVID hit. So then we experienced what everyone in the construction industry across the nation experienced with supply chain issues and some labor shortages. These things caused delays along with our wonderful northeastern Ohio weather. Right. But we're finally here. Yes, Finishing. yes. And that's good. And, and I've watched them in recent weeks trying to get the surface done and, mm-hmm. and so on. Yeah, In the snow. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> so how about a cost for the project? What's that running? Well, you know, the project costs are broken down in the site development and the excavation infrastructure improvements. And there's the concrete and, you know, the new and improved parking lots we put in. We put in a new, brand new uh precast concrete restroom facility on, of course, the playground equipment. Then there's the turf servicing, fencing all around it, lighting. We have security cameras. All total, the project cost was almost $2 million. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, and so city dollars, grants, and some city other dollars, things. We're yeah. very thankful to uh, State Senator Kirk Sharing, Representative Scott Olis Lager, for supporting and guiding us to receiving money from the State of Ohio Capital Budget Award. We also received and ODNR, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources uh, Nature Works grant, and that was specifically for adaptive play equipment. And then it just wouldn't be possible also without um, significant philanthropic support that we received from the Hoover Foundation for the new playground. And then, of course, our city council, North Kent City Council, appropriated additional funding. And we also had, um, we have a donor program in place, and I'll talk about that a little more later, but we did have some early donors. Uh, Special Education Director John Welsh was one that made a donation. A uh, wonderful uh, business in the community that will be there on Saturday is Kona Ice and right. Derek Ray. He has yeah. made some donations. And a really lovely story of a donation that started off with maybe just going to be a bench for this park turned into someone who um, had has a wife that passed away in um, 
was not able to really, with COVID and everything, have a memorial. She was at uh, special education in special education here in North Canton City Schools. Um, her name was Becky Connery. Her husband Bruce contacted us, and he uh, and his children set up a GoFundMe account and just asked all their friends and family, "Do you want to donate? We might want to buy something that, for this park. It might be a bench." And it just took off up over sixteen thousand wow, dollars that uh, was contributed to this park. That's great. So, how could people help participate and uh, with the city donor program? Yes, we will have information on the new donor program available uh, Saturday, and we're also going to be pushing it out more on our website. We never really had a defined donor program we do now, so we have multiple levels, starting at just we'll take any denomination. Sure. So, under a hundred dollars, we'll receive a certificate from the mayor. Then it goes uh, in certain levels to whether it's a bronze level, a gold a silver or a gold. And then the memorial benches, people always want to ask about that. That's uh, above a $3,000 donation. Um, We'll get you a memorial bench. And inside the park, we are going to have uh, these new wood posts that will have either the gold donors, the silver donors, or the bronze donors. People can um, select their their name, children's name, a loved one in memory of, um, and have that um, memorial uh, at making a contribution to the park. Great. So plenty of opportunities still yes. and in the future and uh, to help support and uh, so on. What future plans or expansion plans do you have uh, uh, potentially in the future for Dogwood? Oh, we have lots of great things. We're collaborating with the um, North Canton Library. And in fact, today they were installing their Story Walk. That's something we don't have in any of the other parks. And what that is is an opportunity for a family to walk along the path and read a book. So as so many feet, you'll get to read a different page of that book. So they were installing that in the snow today, and it will be available on Saturday with their first book, and then they'll go ahead and change that out uh, periodically. We're also working with Akron Children's Hospital to build the child. They still would really like to have in that park a small children's performing arts pavilion Ah. just a small little stage area where kids can you know have impromptu acts maybe we can do things with the library they can um, act out little stories Uh, maybe the school might want to have a little you know concert or choir event or something with the band Um, and then of course we are planning to add more benches seating areas shade structures picnic tables that's where the donations come in. <laughs> we need the help to put more amenities. People want bocce courts. They want grills. They have no shortage sure. of suggestions, sure. but we, we do need help to, to be able to provide that well, down the road. That's awesome. Between the expansion plans and the donor program, it sounds like it's certainly feasible. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what about the rest of the park system? I know this is a big piece, and it, it certainly uh, transforms that particular park, but what about the entire park system in the city? Well, the entire park system, you know, we we are constantly managing, looking at the equipment. We've heard people say already Price Park is starting to look dated now that this looks so new. So, you know, we do periodically, you know, we're always checking and um, uh, always um, inspecting our equipment for safety. But when times come, we do upgrade. We also recently acquired land for park development, and people may have heard about that. And so at the appropriate time, we are going to be seeking community input on a variety of park amenities and considerations. We want to check with the community on what everyone is interested and hopefully design something that everyone will like. Sure. Great. Anything else you want to share with us about the celebration Saturday, the kickoff, the grand opening and the, the, the ceremony with dignitaries and donors mm-hmm. and others for this weekend? Uh, well, there'll be a lot of people there to thank. Um, we are going to definitely have our current Mayor Wilder and administration and our current city council. But we've also invited back our previous mayor, David Held, and our previous city council members. They were all in place back in 2017 and approved this project from the start. So we thought it was very important to bring the current and the past together. Uh, like I mentioned before, you know, we will have significant people, significant donors. Kona Ice will be there with their delicious frozen ice truck. We have a little free giveaway prize to the first 200 kids um other things planned hopefully if the weather's good you know just kind of an excitement with the ribbon cutting and a countdown yeah certainly it's ohio it's northeastern ohio the weather is a big piece is and we're right now it looks pretty good Mm. it looks you know fingers fingers crossed crossed, right right right. Mm -hmm. any uh rain dates or any potential no rain date it's rain or shine so if unfortunately it's a little drizzly saturday morning we'll be under umbrellas and we'll probably cut the speeches short and maybe the kids will run in and play a little but let's keep fingers crossed hopefully we're northeastern ohioans we can take a little bit of uh, weather right so that's awesome good Mm -hmm. looking forward to it is there anything else you want to share with us um, just some of the equipment at the park. We uh, 
I just wanted to cover, uh, sure. when you first come in, this was designed so that when you go to the left, it's a toddler area, two to five. When you go to the right, it's the older kids, five to okay. 12. That was based on community input where people said other playgrounds didn't have that and you had big kids knocking down little kids. Um, so we have some real challenging play equipment in there. Some of the, well, definitely the highest slides we have of any playground are in this park. And also in the back of the park, we have a new zip line, which is gonna be a real big hit, I know. And there's a new rock climber and it's something for everyone like I said with the accessible equipment also mixed throughout but then another unique feature that is at this playground that's not at any others is something that is um, called Biba Interactive Play B-I-B-A Biba is a mobile app that integrates physical play with mobile gaming so a parent or caregiver can download the free Biba app on their phone or tablet then they follow along to play sort of classic schoolyard games in combination with screen-based experiences. It just provides another level of variety in the playground experience. So they can select, um, they can scan the QR code, which is on the sign in the playground, and that'll download the app, or they can simply download it on their own device. And then you follow the screen instructions to play. So just something new and different to come out Neat. to the park and check that out. That's cool. Yeah, looking forward to that. And it's how they, you know, you don't usually think about how can we incorporate technology into a playground, but right. they, they have, yeah. If they have found a way. It's, it's in Something our world. Something for right? everyone. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, we appreciate the city uh, working on this and you, you know, over Absolutely. the last, since 2017, you're probably very excited to see the culminating uh, very event on Saturday and the expansion later on. But yeah. that's great. Anything else you'd like to share? Oh, just thanking North Canton City Schools for their support on the project. You know, we did this for the kids. You've got the kids. Right. <laughs> and we're proud of our North Canton City Schools staff, students, families. I mean, you all are who make this a great city to live and, a, and work in. And a great city needs a great park system, right? So, right. you know, Dogwood is located in this bustling area. It's near our beautiful Dogwood pool that people love. We've got the basketball court, skate park. All your North Canton City School fields with football, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, softball. I mean, this is such yeah. a truly There's active There's a, a little area. rental facility right there, yes. a little building, lots of meetings going. It's scheduled nearly all the time, it yes. seems like. so. Yeah, And we know this popular. park is going to bring people from other communities, sure. and right. they're going to get to see the great community that right. we get to enjoy all the time. Right. Yeah, we're very thankful for the city and the, the you know, the, the kids in the community. It's a it's a great community for kids, and we share in that and uh, appreciate the partnership to do that. So best of luck Saturday. will be there to, right. to share in the festivities and uh, kick it off in great fashion. Great. So thank we're you for your forward. work. Thank very you. much appreciate it. Well, thanks also to our listeners for being here, and uh, we're looking forward to next week's podcast as we salute the administrative professionals who work in North Canton City Schools as part of our Administrative Professionals Appreciation Week. Uh, we'll be talking with Michelle McAllister from North Canton Middle School and Kathy Snyder from Hoover High School. And uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, ideas, thoughts, concerns, uh, send us an email at vikingspotlight at northcantonschools.org. And uh, probably should mention, I'm not sure we actually mentioned that the uh, it's 10 o'clock Saturday morning mm -hmm. uh, for a kickoff, but uh, after that, it'll be open to the public, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Just maybe mention also parking. I'm not sure how many people are coming to this, but parking will be available at the Hoover Stadium parking right. lot, Dogwood lot. You know, we do have the uh, increased parking at the at the playground now but um there are also the other lots sure available. right across the street yeah big big parking lot so that's awesome well i hope we have a great turnout hope we have great weather and i know it's a great playground it'll be a blast all right thank you thanks all appreciate it and uh signing off at uh, viking spotlight go vikings mm -hmm.